Somebody ought to call him this morning. Somebody ought to call him this morning. His name is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. When the doctors give that report, somebody needs to call him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody has pain in their body this morning. Somebody needs to call him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord. By the power of grace divine, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope that my will be lost in thine. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen and amen. Will I give honor to God, to the angel of this house, in his absence, our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Jonathan C. Augustine, and his lovely wife, Michelle, clergy, officers, members, and friends of this great church, my church family, St. Joseph. To those on Facebook, we extend this sanctuary into your homes and to your cars. Now, I had it all together this morning until I saw someone come into the sanctuary. Every time I preach, I give honor to my mother, who is now with the Lord. Uh, when the choir was singing, he'll welcome, yes, he'll welcome you home. I was thinking about my mother because surely Jesus welcomed her home. I also give honor to my daughter who lives in Atlanta. But my mother, I saw coming in the door from St. Luke AME Church, one of my mother's gospel road dogs. She will be 100 in May, and she made it here to represent. She is the mother of our own Reverend Norfolk. Mother Eula Kerr McCoy, just wave your hand. Just wave your hand. Bless you. You're representing today. Oh, I'm going to try to make it through, but I've already, <laughs> i just already been wiping some tears since I saw her coming through the door. God bless you. To the girls and the women of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, today we see you and we honor you. I acknowledge the pressure and the tension that we are currently experiencing in these STEM streets, especially on our college campuses. Today, it is not a coincidence that you are here and that you are tuned in to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Know that you have the power to raise your hand and to ask for help the power to talk to a friend and a power to walk across the campus to the, counselor, uh, the campus counselor's office. You have the power to drive to get to a professional counselor if you need the help. Please, please do not suffer in silence. Yeah. Please join me in the gospel according to John chapter four previously read for your hearing thank you justice i wish to hone in on verse four the new revised standard update edition reads but he had to go through samaria he had to go through Samaria. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. For just a few moments, I wish to speak from the topic, Jesus is STEM. 
the power in systems. Jesus is STEM, the power in systems. Beloved, one reason STEM careers appeal to many is because the starting salaries often pay wages far above the national average, with the national average being approximately $54,000 According to salary.com, listen to a few starting salary averages in the field of STEM. A doctor in residence is $72,000. A petroleum engineer, $107,000. Naval and marine engineers, $91,000. Nuclear engineers, $86,000. Computer engineers, 79,000. Chemical engineers, 78,000. Computer science, 77,000. And electrical engineers, $75,000. Despite the earning advantage of STEM workers, the nonprofit Bio in, in, Women in Bio, which promotes diversity and inclusion for all women in life sciences, report that women constitute only 27% of STEM workers. Inside STEM, most women are clustered in lower paying healthcare STEM jobs. When it comes to STEM leadership positions, the data is hard to find, but one report indicates that 22 of that 27 are held by white women and less than 4% are held by women of color. As you can see, women of STEM, we have not arrived and therefore cannot be satisfied. We cannot be comfortable and complacent with our Apple computers and iPhones. We are obligated to continue to interpret and contend for the nations. Women of STEM are hired to solve a problem and to and are called to create to make a world and to make a world better you are called on your mountain of stem just for a little while to go through samaria to be effective inside of your scope of job description but even more so because we all are first made in the image and the likeness of god to make God known on the earth. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask yeah. or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yet how do you perceive divine presence working in you? The Holy Spirit in you is the power needed to wrestle against the wiles and the shenanigans found in these STEM streets when your only crime is being smart and being a girl. Mm. Women in STEM, girls who code, girls who like science and math, you are the exponent with the prefix X. EX meaning out of, and the Latin root paner meaning to champion. As a noun, an exponent refers to someone who stands out as a shining representative, one who believes in and promotes truth in mathematics. An exponent is a quantity representing the power to which a given number or expression is to be raised. Girls and women of STEM, as children of the true and living God, you are the exponent. You are the shining factor set forth to rise to your rest in truth and justice in your mountain of STEM as co-laborers with Christ to take up the position of interpretation and attending to the cries of the people. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says we are ambassadors for Christ. Yeah. God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you girls and women of STEM on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled, Pastor Jay, to God first. One to one, then one to many, then many to many because your testimony, like gossip, 
will spread like wildfire. Yet, Ms. Connolly, there is a false dichotomy of sacred and secular in which the church universal is obligated to contend. Professor and theologian James K. Smith and how not to be secular speaks of an imminent frame, imminent I-M-M-A, not I, I-M-M-A-N-E-N-T. It's something that is built in, hardwired, or ingrained. Smith speaks of the imminent frame as a construct where lives are lived entirely in the earthly order and a self-sufficiency that boxes out dependence, boxes in the natural and boxes out the supernatural, boxes in the four and boxes out the more. Women, as we break the glass ceilings, let us also crush this imminent frame. You are the intersection of secular and sacred. You are the place where sacred and secular meet. You, even in STEM, especially as Christians, are obligated to address systematic poverty, racism, ensure voter protection, adjust immigration policy, just treatment of indigenous people, and don't overlook health care for all. The world and its systems all belong to God. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. Whether you have mastered the prioritized parentheses in the order of operations, or whether you have mastered the summation of all variables relating to sigma, whether you have mastered the atomic numbers of the elements of the periodic table, or if you code in C++, Java, or Python, we all need the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Now, consider this simple word problem. It costs $1.50, $1.50, and 50 cents each way to ride the bus between home and work. A weekly bus pass is $16. Which is, better, which is the better deal, paying the daily fare or buying a weekly pass? Dr. Gloria Ford Gilmer of Milwaukee, the first black woman mathematician to have a collection in the Library of Congress alongside the likes of Rosa Parks, explain that for this problem, test engineers assume that only one person would use the bus pass and that the pass would not be used on weekends and that the person only had one job. Dr. Gilmer argued that many African-American students assume that three or four people may use the same pass at a different time of the day or on weekends, or that if one person used the pass, that person may have more than one job. Since situational mathematics is almost always culturally based, in multicultural settings, care must be taken to include cultural assumptions in the statement of the problem. Dr. Gilmer helped students realize what she called their mathematical power, which can be defined as the ability to discern and investigate mathematical relationships observed in patterns and structures. Patterns and structures in one's own surrounding. Thank you, Dr. Gloria Ford Gilmer. Like situational mathematics, scripture is always best understood in context. Our biblical spotlight shines on our exponent, the woman at the well for her survival in them stem streets of Samaria, for her one-to-one -one engagement with Jesus, for her one-to-many souls she directly brought to Jesus, then for the many-to-many -many exponents to ride because of her efforts.
In our text, we are in the midst of a family feud with the Jews and the Samaritans, as both parties are descendants of ancient Israel. One issue between the two parties is, where is the proper place of worship? For the Jews, Jerusalem was the place of worship. For the Samaritans, it was Mount Gerizim. Tired, hungry, and thirsty from the journey, Jesus walked into a messy system. Why? To save it, bidding the entire system to come. Jesus, a Jew, breaching all terms of no dealings, invokes one of the longest, and in many ways, one could argue the most complex dialogues in the gospel, with 13 exchanges invoking not only literal and figurative language, but having historical, cultural, social, and economic, political, ideological, and eschatological or end time significance. Yet, governed by theological necessity of offering God's selves to those that the system deemed unacceptable. Jesus sees, hears, and considers our exponent as valuable to the kingdom of God. Jesus engages, give me water to drink, and ultimately revealing that he is the living water. Drink and you shall never thirst again. Then the woman asks, uh, asks about a bucket in which to draw, for the well is deep. Jesus revealed no bucket is needed because inside of you, Jesus gives a spring that gushes up and out and if not careful, it'll get on you, and others will see it, even at your job. Have you ever been in a place where you've been at your job and you knew the Holy Spirit was all on you? Jesus told, um, she told Jesus about the ancestors how they worship on this mountain. Jesus identified the Father where worship must be in spirit and in truth. Women of STEM, let us not be found worshiping the wrong mountain. The Lord is thy keeper, not your STEM boss, not your paycheck, not your education, but I said the Lord is thy keeper. Jesus is our way maker, our company keeper, and our mind regulator. Can I get a witness? Somebody needs to know that Jesus will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Yeah. I recall working for IBM, internal to IBM, we were called IBMers. I don't know if that's still the case. Somebody let me know later. But back then, we were called IBMers. With this naming convention, a sense of identity, relationship, and belonging was established. Back then, I thought if anything happened, to my employment, Carolyn Henderson, to my above average wage, who then would I be? And where then would I go? I know y'all don't, y'all are too holy to ever think like that. But how much more than IBM is Jesus steep in identity, relationship, and belonging? Jesus said, go call your husband. She replied, I have no husband. Jesus said, true, you've had five, and the one you have now is not your husband. Listen closely. Alan Dwight Callahan, in true to our native land, argues that this exchange is not 
a personal indictment of this woman, but is an ancient Aramaic reference where five husbands translate to five rulers or five lords, possibly representing five foreign lands of the rulers of Samaria, Babylon, Babylonian, Kata, Alva, Hathmet, and Seraphim, or the five husbands may represent five regimes that ruled over Samaria, Assyrian, Babylonian, Persian, Greek, and the fifth one, Jerusalem-based Judea, and the sixth Lord, which is not a husband, but nevertheless imposed political concubinage is Rome. Additionally, there are other possible reasons for this type of marital history other than sin or moral laxity, like leverant marriages where a man is obligated to marry his brother's widow. When Jesus asked, go call your husband, Jesus already knew that this was a setup at the well. In Genesis, Hagar met the divine presence of God through an angel at the spring or a well. Isaac met Rebecca at the well. Jacob met Rachel at the well. Moses met Zipporah at the well. And in John chapter 3, verse 29, John the Baptist had already ID Jesus. This is before we get to chapter 4. John the Baptist already ID Jesus as the bridegroom. Jesus walks in as the groom. Reverend Val, I can't make this up. Jesus, our big exponent, had to go through Samaria to engage one-to-one -one in knowledge and truth, joining and marrying, then changing the one-on-one -on -one to one and one, Jesus getting inside, then transferring the soul of our exponent back into the system for the joining of many unto God. Our woman was called to it. Despite the mess women in STEM, you are called to it. Many Samaritans became believers because of her. If we keep our exponent within the context of her surroundings, which were of oppressive patterns, i.e. rulers of foreign lands, and restrictive cultures, i.e. regimes, then greater care. Thank you, Dr. Gilmer. And I proclaim greater love, honor, and R-E-S-P-E-C-T will be shown to her. In the text, while wrestling with the tension, always look for liberating paradigms. Jesus came to set the captives free. Amanda Gorman says, for there is always light if only we are brave enough to see it, yeah. then brave enough to be it, yeah. end quote. So teach us, dear Lord, to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Yeah. As I close and take my seat. Mr. and Mrs. Don Bell, Jesus is our power in the system needed to discern and investigate all relationships. Jesus is our prioritized parentheses in our order of operation who holds our lives and our minds together. Jesus, the ultimate sigma, summarizes all the variables of our lives, our positives and our negatives, our deriv derivatives and our integrals, our imperfection, our flaws, our deep gashes, our curls and our curves, our blonde hair and our red hair, our dark skin and our light skin, saying it's all good. God surmised the heavens and the earth and determined that before the foundation of the world, you girl, you woman are valuable and you are enough. 
So don't make the temporary problems permanent. Don't take your life, not today and not tomorrow. Jesus took our place on the old rugged cross, the plus sign when the haters mistook the cross for a minus. Our God that compounded the relationship between God's promises and God's benefits, forgiving all thine iniquities, infinity. Healing all thy diseases, infinity. Redeeming your life from destruction, infinity, and crowning you right now with loving kindness and tender mercies. Jesus is STEM, Jesus is science. I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Jesus is technology, the central processor, now into God who is able. Jesus is the chief systems engineer. In the beginning, God created. Jesus is math because one day there will be a gathering around the throne. The revelation revealed, I see 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000. 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000. Then I looked and saw a number that no man can number. So lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Don't be afraid of the messy system, but get in there and help clean up those stem streets, making it more life-giving at the end of the day. As I look back over my life and I think things over when the numbers and the debt and the system was stacked against me, the Lord came through Samaria. The Lord came through the mess. The Lord came through church. It was the Lord. It was the Lord. It was the Lord. The grass withereth. The flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen.